Maybe I'm in the wrong house. Is there anybody here today that needs to be delivered from sin? Amen, amen, amen. Is there anybody that's been like that song, you've been wrapped up, tied up, tangled up, and you need the word of God to set you free? Well, good morning, Mount Zion. Good morning. Good morning. I just want to say good morning to my brothers and sisters who've been on the battlefield. Yeah. <laughs> this morning, I need to open our discussion by the way of a short story that helps us get to the meat of the matter. There's a story told that after an especially hard and hurtful day, at the office, a worn out, discouraged businessman wrote this letter of resignation. He wrote, I hereby officially tendering my resignation as an adult. I've decided I would like to accept the responsibilities of an eight year old again. I want to go to McDonald's and think that it's a four-star restaurant. I wanna sell sticks across fresh muddy puddles and make sidewalk with rocks. I want to think M&Ms are better than money simply because at least you can eat them. I wanna lie up under a big oak tree and run a lemonade stand on a hot summer day. I want to return to a time when life was simple, when all you had to know was your colors, multiplication, and nursery rhymes. Yeah. But, you know, life back then really didn't bother you because you didn't know what you didn't know. I want to think that the world is fair, that everyone is honest and good, I want to believe that anything is still possible. Amen. I want to be oblivious to the complexities of life and be overly excited about little things again. I want to live simple again. I don't want my day to consist of computer crashes, mountains of paperwork, Depressing news about the state of affairs. Uh, depressing news about our president. Uh, depressing news about Russia pulling the strings of our lives. Uh, I'm tired of having more days uh, than I do money. I'm tired of having more doctor bills than I get holiday cards. I'm tired of all of the social gossip. Uh, I'm tired of all the illness and sickness and loss of loved ones uh, that I've had to endure. I want to believe again in the power of smiles, hugs, uh, and a kind word. Uh, I want to believe again in trust, justice, and peace. Uh, I want to believe again in endless dreams and imagination and the goodwill of mankind. But I'm struggling. Because I've been in the same place for a long time. I feel like I'm in captivity, not just in my physical body, but in my spiritual mind, in my emotional mind. It feels like even though I may walk outside of my house, I'm still locked up somewhere deep down uh, in the darkness uh, and it seems like uh, I can't pay my way out uh, I can't pray my way out uh, I can't cry my way out uh, and I still haven't been able to lie my way out uh, so forgive me if I don't have a lot of hope coming out of my mouth uh, but I just feel like uh, the deck is stacked against me uh, I feel like uh, hope has passed me by. I feel like my body is shutting down, but I want to trust God, but I can't trace God right now. I don't even see people around me getting blessed. It seems like they're going through the same thing that I'm going through. When I look down, I look at them and they look down. I'm just wondering, 
When will the Lord come by way? Come on now. Yeah. So I'm giving you my checkbook, my car keys, my credit card bills, and my 401k statement. I'm officially resigning from adulthood. The question that I need to ask your spiritual mind today, Mount Zion, is have you ever felt like this businessman? Do you ever feel like your hope is almost lost? That you stayed in the same spiritual state for far too long? That you're never going to see better days uh, that your present condition is all you have to look forward to uh, oh i think i'm in the house Come now. On, Come on. because there's somebody who yeah. still believes uh, that you'll never pay your bills on time on, uh, there's somebody who still <laughs> believes uh, that you'll never get a job without an education uh, there's somebody who still believes uh, that prayers are only for those who are faithful in church uh, and not a contrite heart uh, but i'm here to let you know that by assignment I'm coming with a word of deliverance for you if you can just trust and believe that God is still able no matter how long you've had to endure no matter how long you've been on the battlefield no matter how long you've been locked up tangled up or wrapped up in some mess if you can just hold on and hold out God said I got something to let you know yeah, yeah. and I'm going to send it by my prophet <laughs> and the prophet shows up on the scene after the exiles have been exiled for a mighty long time yeah, yeah, yeah. they've gotten so low that it seems like God's people are never going to be rescued it seems like God's people have been abandoned by their God uh, and the prophet shows up and says uh, comfort comfort uh, my people and that's where we gotta start today it's a word of comfort it's a word of hope. It's a word of better days. Today, God speaks a word of deliverance for everybody under the sound of my voice. Uh, you ought not leave today and say that message was for nobody else. Uh, if you need deliverance today, uh, it's in your reach. Uh, you just gonna have to reach up and grab it. Uh, you ought not let this word walk right past you. Uh, you better jump on that word's back uh, and say I need to get up out of some stuff today. Because uh, it's available. Today God speaks to you today uh, through this prophet Isaiah and God wants you to know that God understands exactly what you've been going through. Uh, God understands how hard it's been for you over the last few years. Uh, God understands how rough it's been getting up each and uh, every day having to face uh, the same thing. Uh, God knows that day after day, week after after week, month after month, uh, that you are sick and tired uh, of being sick and tired. Uh, you didn't try all of your scriptures. Uh, you didn't pray all your prayers. Uh, and now your money is funny. Uh, your change is strange. Uh, your friends are few. Uh, and you don't know what else to do. Uh, but you need God uh, to do something else. Uh, to do something new. But you're struggling. Have you ever been in a place where you know God wants to teach you something, but you don't know what the lesson is? You're like, I know I've been in this for a long time, and God is trying to do something in me. 
but I haven't figured out what it is. Yeah, yeah. I would change my wicked ways uh, if I thought they were wicked. Uh, right now, it just seems like I'm going through the motion. Uh, and no matter what I do, no matter what I say, uh, I can't get out of captivity. <sighs> and God is trying to let you know today that God understands uh, that you are struggling with uh, the thought of being held captive uh, for the rest of your life. Uh, God understands that you are about at your breaking point. Uh, God understands that you have tried everything that you know to do. Uh, you've prayed, uh, you've cried, uh, and in some cases you've even lied. Uh, but today, uh, for no other reason, uh, it's God's timetable that has come to pass. Uh, and I want to announce that your worst days uh, are now behind you. Uh, the days of endless frustration uh, are now behind you. Uh, your past days of uh, records and sentences and bad decisions and poor choices uh, are now behind you. Uh, today there is a word and a promise uh, of deliverance for whoever knows that God can speak uh, a word in your life uh, and in spite of yourself uh, when God says uh, that your time Your time has come. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm trying to set this thing up. Uh, because if your men and if your enemies had a say so, uh, you wouldn't have been let out. Uh, but God showed up on the scene uh, and said, let my people go. Uh, they've already paid uh, the price that I have dealt. Them. Uh, their warfare is ended uh, and now I'm parting them. Oh, okay, I'm moving too fast. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Somebody wants to shout, but you're not you're not ready to shout because last time you shouted made a fool of yourself. Uh, you had to go back home to what you already had before. So you you want to shout, but you want to make sure that when you shout this time, that God is gonna get you out. Let me let me let me see if I can work this. If it's worth it, work it, pal. God gives you today a word of comfort, which is also a word of hope. It's a word that will eventually make your valley days rise up. A word that will make your high mountains come down low. A word that will refresh your strength. A word that will even renew your faith. As you read Isaiah 40 to the end, you know at the end it starts talking about that you can run and not get weary. You can walk. Y'all know what I'm talking about? So when God gives you a word of comfort, you better believe that as your story continues to ride itself out, that when you start to get up on the wings of eagles, we don't know how you got there, but when God allows you to fly, Oh my God. Okay, let's look at it. Let's look at it. Uh, let's look at what God has to say through his word uh, about how one word uh, from the Lord uh, can truly and completely deliver you. As many of you are or may already know, these exiles have experienced 39 chapters of doom and gloom. Judgment and warning. And now the prophet has been instructed uh, to change the course of direction. That God has another word uh, for his children. And it is a word uh, of grace. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting excited now. <laughs> but you may not know how grace functions. So, Brother Annie, check this out. I didn't realize that 
grace in the Old Testament and grace in the New Testament didn't function the same way. I used to laugh because I would hear the seasoned saints talk about that old time grace. And I used to wonder why y'all getting excited about it. But at that time, I only knew new time grace. But it wasn't until the day that I found out what old time grace was that I knew uh, that there was more in store for me. You see, grace in the Old Testament was defined as deliverance from your enemies, affliction, or adversity. That's old time grace. It's important to note that it was also known to enable you to guide you, to forgive you, and to preserve you. Oh, it ought to be some seasoned saints in here that you thankful that you got some old time grace because you know it was some enemies that you need to deliver it from. You know it was some adversity that you was in conflict with. You know that you had to be enabled to get up at four in the morning, go out into somebody else's field, work all day for two, three dollars, and then go feed 12 and 13 kids. And forgive master when he didn't give you your real wages. Come on, come on. And I like it because I used to sit around and listen to seasoned saints talk about how their bodies never really got sick. They would take some tussing. They would take some of that cough medicine that just, it looked like you could just set it on fire. But what we found out, it really wasn't none of those man-made concoctions. It was grace that was preserving you. That even though you was drinking turpentine, that would kill you today. It was preserving your body because before you would take it, grandmama would pray over it. Mama would pray over it. And then it would end up preserving your body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The reason why this is important to us today is we understand, us new generation, that grace in the New Testament means that you are free, means that you receive the free and unmerited favor of God as manifested in salvation of sinners and the bestowal of blessings. <laughs> oh my God, let me talk to the new folk. Huh? Cause see, we don't understand old time grace because we're not afraid of our enemies no more. <laughs> we don't understand old time grace because when we get afflicted, we just let that thing go. <laughs> we'll be on the job uh, and we'll just walk off at lunch uh, and don't think nothing about it. Uh, we don't know about old time grace because we're not looking to preserve our body because now we believe technology can help us preserve ourselves. <laughs> but when you start talking about, I can be free from my sins because I've been out in this nasty world doing everything that I was big enough to do. Oh, I'm looking for some grace because when I show up every Sunday morning to be with you seasoned saints, if you just knew where I've been, knew what I was doing, you'd understand why I need God's grace. If I could only just get some help today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on now. Come on, Pastor. Have you ever been in a place where you were struggling with something for a long time? Yes, Lord. And without warning, things just started working out. Yeah. Yeah. Things just started coming together. Yes, Lord. Things just started working in your favor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you know what out of doubt? Uh, that it had nothing to do with you. Uh, you didn't deserve it. Uh, you hadn't asked for it. Uh, and that day you show sure what looking for it. Uh, but unbeknownst to you, uh, you know that everything happened uh, because of the 
the glory of God uh, because grandmama prayed over you uh, when you weren't praying for yourself uh, because you finally made it to church uh, and said God save me uh, God redeem me uh, God I'm sorry uh, and the next thing you know uh, God started opening up doors uh, that you couldn't open yourself in our text this morning Isaiah is leading us out of a long uh, captivity into a new plane of opportunity. Yeah. It's an opportunity because it's a word of comfort for the children of Israel who have been under the Assyrian threat. Somebody say, I've been up under threat. Have you ever had some people who really didn't like you? And if they could just catch your guard down, uh, they was going to try to take you out. Uh, but for whatever reason, uh, because God's hands of protection was around you, uh, you might not have been able to get out, uh, but they also couldn't get in. Uh, and they was just waiting for God to let down his hand uh, so they could come and take your life. But they had to stay and wait. So here they are in captivity. But notice, even though it's been years, uh, you never hear that anybody's life got taken. They just couldn't have freedom to move to where God had promised. So this is an opportunity because it's a message of encouragement uh, for the exiles in Babylon 150 years later. Oh, see, church folk don't know when to shout. Sometimes we only shout when we hear God is getting ready to get us out. But we serve such an awesome God that when God says, I'm going to set you free, that promise ain't for just you right now. It's for your children's children, children's children, that when God says that you are free indeed, it's for your legacy, meaning that I'm not shouting just for myself. I'm shouting for my grandbabies. I'm shouting for my baby's babies. I'm shouting because our last name shall not die. It shall... This means that God can give you favor now, even with your enemies. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. I don't know if y'all saw that. They still in captivity. God gives them favor while they still held captive. Did you know that you can receive favor from God even though you haven't been delivered by God? Thank you. Meaning that you can still be in the place where you can't do what you want to do. But because of God's favor, things start working out on your behalf. And even though you can't leave that joker, you're getting strong on the inside. Even though you can't pay the mortgage, they keep giving you free extensions. Even though you you ain't got to lift up your hands because the enemy is scared to come close. So you've got favor, but you ain't been to living yet. That means that while God is showing you favor, he's allowing those knuckleheads around you to see it. Okay. It's somebody in church you want to shout right now. But you sit next to that knucklehead. <laughs> you want to shout right now because you know it's somebody that's looking at you right now. They know you've been down and out. They know you've been struggling. They know you ain't been walking the way that you should have walked. But now they can see that it is God who's now with you. It is God who's building you up. It's God who's opening up some doors. And all they can do is watch God start to restore your life. Start to restore your family. Start to restore your prayer life. And it ain't nothing they can do about it. Oh, I like it. Because every time I read a story like this, I see them setting the table in the presence of my enemies. Meaning that they get to come to my party, but they don't get to eat. Meaning that they can watch 
box me up, get ready for the celebration of my life. Uh, but they ain't got no invites. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so, yes. so, so the question is, yes. y'all sit down, y'all trying to push me yeah. too fast. Yeah. Uh, the question is, yeah. we have to ask the Holy Spirit today. Come on. Come on. Uh, see, Sister Aisha, when you get caught up, uh, sometimes you got to ask the Holy Spirit a question. Yeah. Uh, the question is, why and why now? Yeah. 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 Lord, why would you leave me here so long? Yeah. Come on now. And then out of the clear blue, Come get me out. Yeah. Right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't changed. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know what the lesson is. Come on. I'm still upset with what's happening. Yeah. I still got some bitterness because I didn't try everything in my strength to work with it. Yeah. And it ain't worked out. Yeah. So why now, when I'm getting ready to just let go, you show up on the scene and say you free. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Really? Yeah. Have you ever asked God? Really? Yeah. Why, God, yeah. would you have sought a time like this to change the rest of my life? Yeah. And the answer is quite simple. After God has developed your character, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God no longer has to hold you captive. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, Come on. Yes, sir. Oh, I just shouted myself. When God has developed your character, God no longer has to keep you captive. Meaning that God ain't worried about where you go, what you do anymore. Because when your character is right, he don't have to contain you anymore. Oh, I need I be somebody in this house that can testify with me that there was a day that you would have done anything to anybody. But you had an encounter with the Lord. You don't do some stuff that you used to do. You don't go some places that you used to go. You don't say some of the stuff that you used to say. You don't even worry about things that you used to worry about. Because there was a day that you was lost and now you're found. There was a day you was out and God brought you back in. There was a day that you was down and you knew it was the Lord that lifted you up. There was a day when all hope was gone. But now, only because of God that you serve, you know without a doubt that you were supposed to lose and now you're about to win. I'm like a 747 now. I'm trying to get myself aligned because I'm getting ready to come in for a landing. Yeah. Come on, come like on. Like I said, uh, either you yeah. came ready come for on. a word yeah. or you came ready to go. Yeah. So either way, you getting ready to get what you was looking for. All right. All right. Notice here, saints, that these exiles were now being comforted in their present distress. Yeah. As we learn later that in the near future they were getting ready to be fully restored All right, now. check this out brother Dave. <laughs> text says comfort comfort my people right. says your god yeah. speak tenderly to jerusalem yeah. <laughs> that's good there yeah. you see the first thing that god wants to share in your steps toward your deliverance is God's comfort supersedes God's past captivity. Yeah, thank you. That's good right there, Pastor. Y'all need to call Bible study. <laughs> come on now. Can I break this down like a fraction? Yes, sir. I used to preach bad over here. Mm -hmm. Come on. Text says comfort, comfort. Uh -huh. That's two comforts. Yeah. That's a double comfort. Yeah. God only put you in one captivity. Uh -huh. But when he got ready to get you out, he gave you two comforts. Okay. Have you ever heard double for your trouble? Yeah. When God gets ready to comfort you, yeah. see, God yeah. Come on now. is not a man that he should lie. All right, all right. Man. Often, you never hear God repeat himself. All right. He put in his words so we could reread it. But once God speaks something, it's so. Yeah. 
So the question is, why does it say comfort, comfort? Yeah, Bible study is Wednesday. <laughs> Let me see if I can break it down for you. Open up that word. Come on, yeah. There's a word in there that says, whatever that we bind on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. Come on, come on, come on. And whatever we bound in heaven, it should be bound on earth. Come on, come on. Which means whatever is loose down here is already loose up there. All right. And whatever gets loose up there has to be loose down there. So when you hear comfort, comfort, you're really hearing an echo. Which means that when the prophet said comfort, uh, heaven came back and said comfort. Uh, which means that if you got loose down here, heaven said you loose up there. So when you hear an echo, uh, that means that whatever was bound down here just got bound up in heaven. Uh, and whatever got loose down here just got loose in heaven. And it said comfort, yeah. comfort, <laughs> comfort, uh, comfort. Uh, have you ever been to the Grand Canyon, you hear yourself echo, you say, hello? 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 <laughs> it wasn't spoke but one time, but because it went to where it needed to go, and it came back to you, God said, comfort, comfort, and you just got loose. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. That's good to be uh, Maybe you ain't shouted, because you're like, I need some bill money. Yeah, yeah. I really don't need no comfort. <laughs> Have you ever got frustrated that God want to give you stuff that you can't use? I can't pay no bills with no comfort. Comfort should have came home last night. No, I wanted my man. To, uh, I wanted my woman. I wasn't looking for no comfort. I was looking for a body to come and lay next. And Jesus said that evening, you're up. Uh, uh, let me, hold on, let me get out of here. As we know, comfort means to strengthen the mind when it's distressed or enfeebled. It means to console, to give vigor to the spirit, to cheer or to relieve from depression uh, or even trouble. Huh? So where we can't help but to shout uh, is no matter what you've been through uh, for the balance of your life, uh, God comforts, supersedes uh, your depression. Uh, God comforts, supersedes uh, your captivity. Uh, God's comfort uh, reinvigorates uh, your downward spirit. Uh, God comfort uh, helps you uh, to and deliver you uh, from all of your troubles. Uh, oh, I'm about to shout myself. Uh, has anybody ever heard uh, that God will give you double uh, for your trouble? Uh, you'll come out of some stuff uh, and you'll be able to say, uh, I don't look like uh, what I've been through. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, okay, uh, I didn't wind up now. I'm coming in for a landing. My wheels is going down. Uh, second thing says that God wants to share in your steps toward deliverance uh, because of his grace uh, the fight is now over. Yes, sir. The struggle is now over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Out of this tone of love, God has good news for his people. Come on. Come God's on. grace takes over any previous judgment yes, that God had for God's people. Yes, and it announces that their warfare has ended. You see, the prophet uses some military terms to signal the end of a contemporary image of you think about military prisoners uh, or political hostages uh, who are being set free. Uh, Brother Randy helped me out Wednesday night because uh, he told us about a story where he was sent into the fight. Uh, and even though he was in the fight uh, all day and all night, uh, bullets all around him uh, did nothing touch him uh, because God had said, Come. Stay through 
the night until God said, the war is over. You can come back home because your God, who knows every hair on your head, yes, sir. has spoken yes, sir. comfort yes, sir. all over your life. Yes, sir. My God, can you imagine the joy that these exiles had after feeling like God, their God, had forgotten them, only to realize that now the struggle was over, that now the fight was finished, that their best days was before them, and their past struggles were no longer defining their future. Too many saints today are allowing their past to dictate their future. Come on, come we know on, come you on. messed up. We know you had to do some time. We know you had a divorce. We know you had a baby out of wedlock. We know you ain't been in church all your life. On, we know you've been in church and still slipping and sliding, ducking yes, and diving. Yes, sir, yes, sir. But when God says, yes, the warfare is over, oh, yeah, God oh, yeah. says, yes, your iniquity is hard. Yes. That whatever in your past, yes, sir. God just erased that thing. Erase. Come on. You Come thought on. you had a record Woo. when you went to that job, yes. but God had erased. Come on, Pastor. Yes. You thought the divorce was going to keep you from another marriage? God said, Go. You yes. thought the church wasn't going to accept you because yes, you messed yes. up the last church? God said, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is there anybody here today? That's Woo. ready for God to erase yes, sir. some things in your past. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. I'm yes, ready. yes. Everybody rest on your feet. Let me get down. What I particularly like about this text is the fact that God is the one who spoke the word. Yes, you. Yes, you. It's significant because it was God who led them into captivity. Yes. Okay. I woke up this morning and shouted about six because I didn't see it till right now. The enemy had no intentions on letting you go. Ha. Come on, man. Ha. Mm. Well, well. If it had been their way, you would have stayed in captivity. Yeah, yeah. You would have stayed in slavery. Mm -hmm. You would have stayed on that entry level position. You would have never got a promotion. You would have never went to the next level. But God spoke comfort in your life. Yes. And they had to let you go. God spoke comfort in your life. They had to let you loose. God spoke comfort in your life. And things started changing from that point forward. When I think about how long it took me to come into God's saving grace. I never realized that before he saved me, he spoke over me. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I should have been sleeping in my grave. Yeah. A sinner's prayer. But God spoke comfort over my life. And I can testify today that I ain't always had it together. I ain't always walked in the ways of the righteous. I've sat with the scornful. I've hanged out with the wicked. I've did some things, but because God spoke comfort over my life, I couldn't stay in captivity anymore. What I like about this text is that nobody knew what God was getting ready to do. But once they heard God's word, they had to come out. Once God said, comfort, comfort, 
your warfare has ended. Thank you. That means you got to come out of your stage and want it to fight all the time. Yeah. Because ain't no more fight left. When he pardons your iniquity, that's just more than the sinful things that you do. That's part and also the sinful person that you are. So when God changes your character because of a word of comfort, it doesn't matter what barrier was in front of you, it ain't gonna hold you back no more. You gonna have to come out that day because what is now in front of you when he speaks is now behind you. Come on now. Thank you. Your past is now behind you. And ain't nothing holding you back now because God spoke a word that's eternal, which means that you don't have to go back to the hell that you've been handling. You don't have to go back to broken relationships. You don't have to go back to staying broke and being broke. You don't have to go back to loneliness and depression. You don't have to go back to frustration, to loneliness. you got everything ahead of you. And you don't even know what's behind you. All right. Because God said, don't worry about that. Yes, sir. Don't worry about that. Yes. So today, I think it's all family. I just believe, come here, bro, Dave, stay right there. I just believe that sometimes we too smart for our own good. Come on, man. Come on. God erased some stuff in heaven, but we still try to remember it down here. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Say that, say that. So the text said God had to send his prophet uh -huh. so that when he said comfort in heaven, the prophet had to say comfort in earth. And today, only if God is speaking to you, the prophet is going to erase it well, all right from all right uh -huh. go in peace all right and sin no more all right yes if sir. there's anybody else that you need some erasure today you just gotta come down because god's gonna look at you and say comfort go in peace and sin no more yes sir everything you thought you did that god hadn't let it go of he already spoke in heaven and said comfort comfort go in peace and sin no more doesn't matter what the man is trying to hold against you when you hear god say comfort I comfort go in peace and sin no more god is looking at you and saying i know the struggle i know you're still crying but i already gave you a house i've already increased your credit i've already taken care of your family i'm trying to erase what you thought was still in the front of you as a barrier go in peace and sin no more god says i know the struggle i know your heart i know who you've helped i know how the same people you helped couldn't help you wouldn't help you but he said don't worry about what they did i just erased them go in peace and sin no more god says i know what your health's been like i know what the doctor said but i told you that you could be free and free indeed go in God says, I know your dreams. I know what you prayed about when you were six. I have not forgot. Your gift will make room for you. But you got to stop holding back your gift. So I'm going to erase what you thought it was for. And I want you to go in peace huh, and sin no more. God says, I know what you do when you're not at the church. I know the little ones that you care after. I know that you may have had some heartaches, some headaches, some hiccups, and some letdowns. But I have equipped you and blessed you for a reason. Because there's some knuckleheads that I can speak to that'll listen to you. So stop worrying about what you did and start worrying about what I'm trying to do in you. Go in peace. Huh? And sin no more. 
God said, go in peace and sin no more. God said, go out. There's some people who want to be in church that don't know if the church is going to accept them. You have to tell them the devil is a lie. God loves each and every body. Go in peace and sin no more. God says go in peace and sin no more. God says go in peace and sin no more. A child shall lead them. Go in there. Do you still believe in the power of prayer? Mm -hmm. God has put some people on your heart. I need you to stay in prayer for them. They've stopped praying for themselves. Mm -hmm. But as long as you're praying for them, they gonna come back yeah. but while they've given up mm -hmm. you got to stand on top of the mountain like Moses mm -hmm. and just yeah. keep your hands up cause they still in the fight yeah. they just don't know if the Lord is fighting with them yeah. but as long as you keep your prayer hands up they yeah. gonna get the victory yeah. and yeah. they yeah. gonna know that you have not that way when they come back, they'll never depart again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he's not forgot about your dreams, your struggles. Yes, sir. But you got assignment. Fulfill that. And God will come back. Preacher told us last night, Friday night, you'll never lose time with God. Everything you thought was too late. Come on, man. God goes beyond that. 